Can I ask Dave higher there in Surrey where this killing happened? How do the people there, Dave, see it? Is Nijar seen uh, as as some kind of a heroic figure, as some kind of a martyred figure, or do is there a recognition that many of the people who are in Canada are today flirting with the Khalistani movement, have resorted to hate speech and violence that you spoke about? How does the Indian community in Surrey look at what's happening, Mr. Hayat? I think uh, probably 80 to 90 percent of the Indo-Canadian community uh, in Surrey and in Canada don't really agree with the Khalistan issues. They think if they, they want Khalistan, they should go deal with it in India rather than in Canada. But the, the probably smaller minority, probably around 10 percent, maybe 15 percent maximum, who are in, behind this. And usually they get all the press coverage, media coverage with the politician. And sadly enough, uh, some of the politicians at the federal level, like the prime minister, he probably thinks who are brief some, all the Indo-Canadians on the same page. Most Indo-Canadians want nothing to do with the Khalistan. They say that's something for India should be left with India. But they are not very vocal because they don't want to be assaulted if they publicly go out and speak against these people. Right. Because so, if you take a look at this history of some of the people, it's very violent. So most of the general public doesn't want to speak against him publicly. But very, generally, you're, you're, making a very important point. you're making a very important point, Mr. Hayat. You're saying 80 to 90 percent of the people, Indian citizens there, want to have nothing to do with these Khalistani elements. They do not want violence of any kind, do, want to stay away from it. Therefore, Samir Kaushal, do you believe that Canada also needs to speak out against these elements? Because the fear is the Canadian government of Trudeau, because of the alliance it has with a party where there are large Sikh elements, because there's a, uh, he, he, who are seen to have links possibly with some of these extremist elements, that Mr. Trudeau or indeed across party lines, they need to speak out against violence. I mean, a rules-based order, as, uh, as Mr. Kaju said, cannot tolerate violence and hate speech or uh, language that is seen to encourage secessionism of any kind. Uh, but Rajiv, first of all, I, I am going to be, uh, disagree with Mr. Cartwheel's uh, statement regarding the regarding the judiciary of Canada. The, the, we are the judiciary is, uh, is very strong here. Uh, fine, I, I can understand the emotions are very high, and uh, sometimes we just uh, flow with the emotion. But as far as you said, the, the community should come out, and community should say, I think we have a diverse community. And uh, recently, I just got some information. Recently, I just got some information that Pakistani community, the Pakistani Canadian community is coming forward in favor, in, in, in support of Mr. Justin Trudeau. And they are organizing a rally, I think, within two, uh, one or two days in solidarity with Justin Trudeau. Uh, so so the jump of Pakistani community in this in this mm -hmm. whole uh, case is, you know, uh, going to gonna, uh, change the narrative of uh, this discussion totally in a different way. I mean, I mean, but that uh, would be, that would be again, that would be again a dangerous turn that it would take. Vivek Kaju, you heard from Samir Kaushal saying, look, he still has faith there in Canadian courts. Is, has the time come, Mr. Kaju, uh, uh, for India in a way to send out? How, how does India, I come back to where I started, what is the message India sends out then? First, let me respond to Mr. Sam, uh, to Samir ji. If India sends material mm -hmm. to Canada about interrogation, reports, etc., the first thing that comes into the mind of the Canadian prosecutors and Canadian legal system is how was this material obtained? Am I wrong, Samir? There is deep think, suspicion. Think, there are, there is there are deep, so many years. Oh, one, one by one, one by one. Let, let yeah. me complete. Yes. There is deep suspicion about Indian systems. That is why not once has anyone been extradited. Why is it that with all the evidence available against Nijjar himself, no action was taken to extradite him? Why was it that in 1982, Mrs. Gandhi herself asked Pierre Trudeau to extradite a man who later was involved in the conspiracy? of the Kanishk bombing, where 329 people died. Is that racist or not? I'm sorry, I'm using the word. It's a difficult word to use. But that is the approach, that the Indian system has deep lacunas and you can't trust it. This is the approach of the Canadians. That is why the Canadians asked 
Indian security personnel applying for visas. Where have you served? If you've served in JNK, Jammu and Kashmir, battling terrorism, we will not give you a visa. They ask questions that no sovereign government has is entitled to ask. They ask questions which means the breaking of Indian laws by these visa applicants. It is the sovereign right of a state to deny or accept a visa application. It is not the sovereign right of a state, Samir, to ask a visa applicant to break his own laws.